Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another top 10 list for you all. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my top 10 overrated board games. Now it's not very often that I make a list from such a pessimistic perspective. So I'm not going to elaborate too much as far as the games are concerned. But I am going to give you an explanation as to why I think that these 10 games on this list are overrated. The majority of people uh, give too much clout, too much... Uh, uh, validity to these games, or at least more than I think that they deserve. Now, the majority of the games on this list I do own, and a good chunk of them I actually like a decent amount. So it's not necessarily that these are 10 bad games, although there are some that I do kind of feel like are bad, but these are definitely games that, while I enjoy, I don't understand why other people or the majority seem to enjoy it that much more than I do. So without any further ado, let's get straight to the list with my number 10 overrated board game. And it's number 10 because I still like this game. And that is Through the Ages by Vlada Hevato. And this is a civilization building game, but it's also a very long heavy Euro cube pusher style game, which is one of the reasons why it is number 10. This game is currently ranked on BGG as number 13, very highly ranked. And this is a 20 year old game at this point, or almost 20 years. This came out in 2006. But here's the thing. This game for many years was actually ranked in the top five on BGG. It's only in recent years that a couple of newcomers have been able to push this game down. And I just find that's a very high ranking for a game as niche as this. First of all, Civ building is not necessarily for everybody. And second of all, as I mentioned, this is a long involved game. This game, the abbreviated version of the game, can take up to two hours, maybe even more depending on the player count, because this game does go from anywhere from two to four players. And once you're playing at that four player count, this is a very long game, especially if you play the full version of the game, which involves three different ages of history, that's too long. However, I have had a love-hate relationship with this game over the years, on and off, and I find myself currently being in a situation where I'm actually appreciating this game, I'm appreciating Vlad Hivato and his brilliance, it is a brilliant design, and it is a fun little puzzle trying to figure out all the pieces to make your civilization thrive and make the right decisions to make sure that your population's needs are taken care of. And again, from a historical perspective, it's very fun because you're dealing with all these different historical wonders of the world, historical leaders, military leaders, civil leaders, and what have you. Very fun, but at the same time, very long and very specific. Definitely not a game for everybody. How the heck did they make it as high to number 13 on BGG? I do not know, but it's my number 10 overrated board game of all time through the ages. Now we move on to my number 9 overrated game. Again, a game I like. I'm giving that caveat, especially for these first couple games on the list, because... That's the reason why they are much lower on the rankings, because I still do enjoy them. And that is Blood Rage by Eric Lang. And this here is a Norse-themed game where players are trying to control as many territories in Midgard as they can. The map consists of eight different regions, and it's basically an area control game. However, players are using card play. They're using particular cards that grant them abilities and particular actions that they can take. It also, these cards also serve as their combat. So there is a little bit of card combat taking place, a little bit like Cosmic Encounter style. You put a card face down, all the players in that region reveal the card face up, and that determines who wins that combat in that particular area. And then they'll be able to collect the bonus associated with that particular area. There's three ages or three rounds in this game, and every round begins with a little bit of card drafting, pick and pass card drafting, a la Seven Wonders. This is a fine game. It is a fun game. I like the theme. Uh, I like the quickness of the game. This is not a long, you know, drawn out game at all. The very, uh, very much the opposite of Through the Ages. It has nice presentation from the artwork, the graphic design, the nice miniatures to represent your troops. Really cool. At the same time, there are some drawbacks for this game that keep me from liking as much. First of all, I, I do enjoy Eric Lang, and I find that I enjoy a lot of other Eric Lang games more than this one. 
But for whatever reason, this is his highest ranked game by far. This is currently ranked, as of this recording, number 44 on the BGG Top 100. Uh, by far his favorite, uh, his most popular game. I don't think he has any other games in the top 100. He has a few uh, pretty highly ranked, but nowhere near as this. And another thing about this game is how swingy it could be, how unbalanced it could be. Well, maybe not unbalanced, but how unfair it could be or the discrepancy between whoever's winning the game and whoever's even second place. Sometimes it could really be a true blowout of a game. Uh, and that being said, there's always the opportunity for a comeback. So if after age two, you are in a considerable lead, don't take it for granted that you're guaranteed to win no matter what you do in age three. Comebacks are definitely possible. So from that perspective, it's exciting to know that a comeback is, is possible. At the same time, when you're losing by 30, 40, 50 points, uh, that can be a little bit humiliating. Fun game, lots of potential. I do enjoy it. Lots of the people that I play with enjoy it. But to me... I don't see why it's number 44. My number 9 overrated board game of all time, Blood Rage. And now we move on to my number 8 overrated board game. And that is Gloomhaven, The Jaws of a Lion. And I have not played the original Gloomhaven yet. I figured Gloomhaven, Jaws of a Lion would be a nice, smooth introduction into the game system. Uh, and uh, and it has been. Uh, I do like the format of this game. I like the fact that the <clears throat> all the scenarios take place in this adventure book that you flip through. So instead of having to lay out tiles and go through all the hard work of doing that, you simply open up your scenario book and you have your map for that particular scenario and you go through this book. Sometimes you'll need additional sheets from another book in order to complete the scenario because it might be a little bit larger than what it entails in the original scenario book. And that's all well and that's all good. I like the tutorial style that this game features where little by little you're learning the rules. So the first five scenarios, I believe there's like 25 or so odd scenarios for the entire campaign. The first five scenarios serve as a tutorial. And instead of teaching you all the rules straight off the bat, they kind of gradually pick up the rules. So by rule, uh, by scenario number two, you learn a little bit more than by scenario one. By scenario five, you've completely learned all the rules that you need to know. Now, I have gone through the tutorial, and I've gone through four additional scenarios. So that means I've gone through nine of the first scenarios, not halfway just yet. But I have gone past the tutorial part. And so far, I'm enjoying the game. It's a good game. Uh, I like the... the uh, <clears throat> The differences between this and typical dungeon crawl style games, which usually are more Ameritrash, usually more dice heavy. I like it uh, as an alternative. However, I think I still prefer my classic traditional dungeon crawl style games where there is more uh, luck based uh, combat resolution. I think I actually do prefer those over this. Um, it's a little bit too puzzly for me. I do like it at two or three players cooperatively. Playing it solo, um, not so much. You have to control multiple characters. And again, the puzzly feel of it all, trying to manage that all in your head. Um, <clears throat> it, it slows the game down a little bit too much for me. I also, again, the reason why this is on my list at all is because of how highly ranked it is. Again, I think it is a fine game. However, it's ranked number seven. Considering the fact that Gloomhaven is number three, you would think that Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion would suffer a little bit because of that and at least not make it to the top 10 but it's still ranked number seven so the gloomhaven fans are really digging this game that's great for them as far as i'm concerned <laughs> it's the number uh eight most overrated board game of all time gloomhaven jaws of the lion now we move on to number seven i think i might have said that gloomhaven was number seven but my true number seven overrated board game of all time is sagrada and sagrada here I think is even more uh, uh, overrated than Gloomhaven. Because even though Sagrada is not ranked nearly as high as Gloomhaven, it is currently, as of this recording, ranked number 176. And I don't understand that. Again, I do like this game. I think it's okay. But I don't understand how it's ranked in the number 200, uh, in the top 200. Especially considering the fact that this game... It's kind of like inspired and came out around the same time 
as role player. And this game is considerably higher than role player. It's a few hundred spots higher on BGG. Uh, I don't know if it's perhaps the presentation. It's a prettier looking game than role player. Perhaps the aesthetic appeal to some people. Um, it's a little bit lighter than role player. And maybe for this type of game, uh, people prefer the fact that it's a little bit lighter. And it does have, I guess, a more generic or I would say non-theme to it. While role player does have a fantasy theme that perhaps is not for everybody. But then again, we're talking about Gloomhaven. <laughs> fantasy theme game that somehow has, has converted all of these Euro gamers into Dungeon Crawl fans, right? So how is it that role player is now ranked higher than Sagrada, or at least closer to Sagrada. Again, I like the game. It's fun. I find it to be a good gateway game, introductory game to other people. Um, I do see its value. That's why it's still in my collection. However, I do not think it warrants being number 176. My number seven most overrated board game of all time, Sagrada. And now we move on to my number six. And my number six is Star Realms. And I keep my Star Realms cards right here. And Star Realms is a deck building game that as of this recording is currently ranked number 138. Considering that this game is almost 10 years old, that is very impressive. This game was once ranked in like the top 75 or so. And that is really, really high for this light deck builder game. I do enjoy this game. However, there's not too many deck building games that are ranked higher than Star Realms at the moment. I think there is Clank, uh, Aeon's End, and maybe Dominion. And that's insane. I don't think this is the fourth best um the fourth best deck building game as a matter of fact hero realms its sister game which is kind of like a re-implementation of this game but with a fantasy theme versus a science fiction space exploration theme which is what star realms has hero realms is ranked hundreds of spaces lower than star realms and i think appropriately so i think hero realms is in a spot where it should be i'm not necessarily making the debate as to which one is better, Star Realms versus Hero Realms. I tend to personally prefer Hero Realms because I prefer this, the fantasy theme over the sci-fi theme. But at the same time, I think that Hero Realms is appropriately ranked. It's like in the five or six hundreds or so. That's that's good for where it, for what the game is. Star Realms, I don't understand why it's number 138. I think a lot of it was the novelty of the game when it came out. It kind of felt like a micro game because you just bought this small economical package and all of a sudden you had a game and then you would make a few other transactions to buy smaller packs and you would add to the game. Um, but again, I do not understand why it's still ranked in the top 150 all these years later. Enjoy the game. Have it in my collection. Don't play it as much anymore because... When I do feel the itch to play this type of game, I find myself playing Hero Realms, in particular with the campaign expansions that make the game fully cooperative and much more story-based. My number six overrated board game of all time, Star Realms. And now we move on to my number five most overrated board game of all time. And at this point, we're starting to get to the part of the list where I'm liking these games Less and less. My number five is Tigris and Euphrates, designed by Reiner Knizia. And this is the only Reiner Knizia game that I've ever seen ranked in the top 100. Currently, it's just been pushed out of the top 100. As of this recording, it's ranked number 104 on BGG. But for many years, this game has been in the top 100. While lots of Reiner Knizia games have a hard time even get into the 300s. And I find that while I appreciate this game, I think it's a good game for its time, the late 1990s, I think it was an excellent game. But at the same time, I don't consider this to be a top 10 Reiner Knizia. And that might sound like blasphemy to some people, because for many people, this is the Knizia of all Knizias. But I don't consider this to be a top 10 Knizia game. And I don't understand why it's there. I mean, first of all, it's very conflict heavy. Most of uh, Reiner Knizia games are non-confrontational. They're very Euro-style games where you're just trying to 
you know, outdo your opponent and score more victory points than them. You are trying to score more victory points, but the main way you score victory points in this game is by attacking your opponents. Um, the innovative idea of internal versus external conflict was a thing back in the 1990s, but there's so many cooler, innovative ways of having conflict in games nowadays that that has been outdone. So I still don't understand why it's ranked so high. Again, it might just be the reverence that people have for this game, the fact that it kind of does have a little bit of a cult following among Knizia fans. And, you know, that tends to distort people's perspectives. And sometimes you go into a game wanting to like it. And if you like it enough, you'll pretend that you like it even more. I don't know what it is. But for me, overrated, number five overrated board game of all time, Tigris and Euphrates. Now we move on to my number four most overrated board game of all time. And for lots of people, this might be their number one. And that is Splendor. And Splendor here is currently, as of this recording, ranked number 196. And I do not understand why. This game, it's a fine game. It's fun. It has a nice little presentation to it with the poker chips and the colorful artwork and graphic design. Nice and cool. It's a very... You know, these poker chips are superfluous. You do not need them. They add to the presentation, but cardboard tokens would have done just fine. This game here, people see it as, I don't know, the new gateway game of gateway games. And I just find that so much more of the lower ranked obscure gateway games are better for it than this. I mean, I prefer Sagrada as a gateway game over Splendor. But... For whatever reason, it is ranked very high, still in the top 200 uh, at this point. And this game is almost 10 years old itself. I believe it was 20, 2014 when it was first published. So uh, it's been out there for a while. Can't find that information on the box. But yeah, I played it a few times. I bought it because I thought, hey, you got to have Splendor in your collection. Don't think the same anymore. My number four overrated board game of all time, Splendor. And now we move on to my number three. And for my top three, I got to say that I don't enjoy these games at all. I had moments of trying to enjoy them. I had moments of convincing myself that I enjoy them. But I don't. My number three is Steam by Martin Wallace. And this is his... Reimplementation and simplification of Age of Steam, which, mind you, I have never played. Age of Steam definitely has a bigger cult following than Steam. It's ranked even higher on BGG, and Steam is ranked pretty high itself. Steam, as of this recording, is ranked number 249 on the BGG rankings. And I know that all the Age of Steam fans that are watching, all, all two of them, all three of them, are going to comment down below, and they're going to tell me how... Age of Steam is so much better than Steam. And it might be, but it sounds like it's also a longer, more uh, involved experience that I probably might not be interested in. But Steam itself, it's a pickup and delivery economic game. Uh, you're trying to manage your income. And as you manage your income, that's a big part of your victory condition. It's been years since I've played this game, actually. I'm trying to sell it and I'm having a hard time. But... Um, you know, I don't want to donate the game either. I'm hoping to get something for it. But, yeah, you know, interesting, fun. I like the map. I, li I like the pickup and delivery. But I just don't see why it's ranked 249. I mean, it sounds to me like what happened was that lots of the Age of Steam fans that were a little discontent with Age of Steam, perhaps because it was too long, perhaps because it was too complex gravitated towards this simplification and because of that they automatically liked it i just have a hard time believing that that many new fans to the hobby who did not have that age of steam background went into steam and said yeah th this game is one of the best out there don't understand it's not that pretty looking don't understand why it's ranked number 249 my number three most overrated board game Steam. And now we move on to my number two. I do not even own a copy of number two. My number two is actually a series of game of games, and it's the Exit Games. Um, 
I appreciate Inca and Marcus Brand at bo as board game designers. I enjoy a lot of their games. I have a good amount of their games in my collection. And I can appreciate the value of Exit, honestly. The brilliance from a design perspective. But it's just not for me. Uh, probably because me and my wife were not very good at it. Uh, I only played one, one uh, game in the Exit series. By the way, the Exit series has several games out. Four of them are ranked in the top 1,000. The highest one is ranked, as of this recording, at number 298. I just find it hard to believe that these games are that good. First of all, they're one-off experiences. You play the game one time. And as you play the game, you're taking things down, you're breaking things apart, you're throwing them away. And people can make the argument about all oh, the legacy games. Legacy games give you a campaign. Legacy games give you 10, 15, sometimes 20 experiences out of them. Before you have to say, oh, well, this copy is no good. And quite often, legacy games are still playable. I know that's up for debate and contention. They're still playable after you throw them away. These types of games are, have no value once you use them. The, the most you could do if you take care of the components and don't throw them away or what have you, the most you could do is gift it to someone else so that they can play the experience. But yes, you might get an hour, two hours of enjoyment if you like that type of game. But again, just... It's not worth it for me. My number two overrated board game of all time, Exit. And now we move on to my number one. And this one's my number one. A combination of factors, first of all, for how highly ranked it is. Some of these games, well, highly ranked, not as high as this one. And second of all, because how much I dislike it. Out of the 10 games here, it is by far the one I enjoyed the least. And that is The Seventh Continent. And this might be controversial because this game is currently, as of this recording, ranked number 85 on BGG. I so wanted to enjoy this game. People describe this as the game that you set up and just explore for hours on end, forgetting about everything, forgetting about your responsibilities, forgetting about life. You're so immersed in the story that's taking place. And at least in my experience, and again, I didn't get to play this game many times. And people are going to use that argument, oh, you've got to play it more. That's not the way I work. I understand I like to give games a few tries. But if after a third play, I'm not enjoying the game, I'm done. You know, uh, I don't want to give a game only one try, not even two, three tries. I was not enjoying the game. Mechanically speaking, wasn't satisfying enough. Uh, the skill check system that they had as far as flipping cards wasn't doing it for me. I find other games have better systems, even similar systems where it's flipping cards to determine the results. Um, the storyline, the fantasy world was not interesting enough for me. The presentation of the game, there was nothing about the game that drew me, that made me want to stay there. Other than the concept, other than the idea and the hype that people gave it. Now people are going to say, well, maybe Seventh Citadel is going to be so much better because you're going to be able to actually interact with the world around you so much more. I don't know. I don't think that was necessarily my problem with Seventh Continent. I think the problem for me was I bought the hype and it didn't live up to the hype, at least not for me. It did not have what I was looking for in a gaming experience. However, because so many people were enjoying it, I assumed that I was going to enjoy it as well. And I did not. My number one most overrated board game of all time, The Seventh Continent. And that's it for today's list, folks. Thank you so much for joining us here at Harry Met Board Games. Please comment down below and tell me what you think is the most overrated game in the board game industry. Also, please tell me what you think about my list. Perhaps some of the games on my list are favorites of yours, and I've hurt your feelings. If I did... I'm sorry. I'm interested in reading what you guys have to say. This is Harry saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.